I guess we're ready. So I'm David Green, Woodstock Fire Chief, and I'm acting uh, in the EOC, which we are. I am sharing uh, responsible responsibilities with Robbie Blish and Ashley Pitoti, who are um, here in the crowd, and a representative from the PD. On my left is the town manager, Frank Heald. And if you guys would just introduce yourself. Jeffrey Kahn, Chair of the Woodstock Village Board of Trustees. I'm Mary Riley, and I'm the Select Board Chair. Sherry Souza, Director of Instructional Support Services for Windsor Central Supervisory Union. Okay, so I will quickly run through our status in the town of Woodstock, and then after we're done, we'll have any question and answer um, that we can help you with. So uh, before I start, one thing I learned uh, here in Woodstock going through Irene, that this is one of the best communities that we can live, th live in, and we get through Irene, and we'll get through this through community support. So I am sure of that 100%. Um, Woodstock Emergency Management has had several meetings over the last few weeks with different players, such as the schools, senior centers, nursing homes, Maniscutney Hospital, Ram State of Vermont, and many others. We are focusing right now on helping those who either are self-isolated, quarantined, or vulnerable. Um, if they're in one of those situations, we obviously want to keep them in the, their house, um, get them what they need to uh, sustain their quality of life at home without coming into the com community. Um, so at this point, we monitor the situation day to day and make necessary adaptations uh, as required. Um, I'll go over you a few of our town um, departments and what we're doing. So at this point, Fire and EMS has plans in place to deal with presumptive or confirmed cases. We have supplies and are waiting for more um, as the uh, demand can be met. One of the things I must say that if you are sick uh, is to call your doctor by the phone and discuss it with him as emergency departments and hospitals are becoming overloaded. If you have a real emergency, obviously call 911. The police department has a strategic plan in place um, as well as a plan should the uh, COVID-19 go through their department. The water company, highway department, and sewer department also have similar backup plans in place. All the town hall departments here in the building have plans in place to continue work, which may be modified as necessary. And if you can, please email or phone in rather doing, than doing face-to-face -face work here. Um, we continue to monitor state guidelines and guidance from the Department of Health and CDC. We also have an abundance of volunteers, which there is a uh, email you can email should you wish to be a volunteer. And that address is volunteer at townofwoodstock.org. And we will use people as we have a need or send an email blast out to those um, with specific questions or needs. Our web pages, the town of Woodstock, the fire department, and police uh, social medias are updated daily with pertinent needs. Um, the EOC email uh, group is updated, updated daily for people at home who wish to get the state guidance or the updates from the state of Vermont. If, again, if you go to the Department of Health, they have that updated regularly. You can also call 211 for updates uh, from the state of Vermont at any time or with questions and they'll put you within, uh, with, excuse me, in touch with the, the responsible person. Uh, one thing we must say right now is the best way to cure this is to practice social distancing. Wash your hands with hot water for 20 seconds or use an alcohol-based solution uh, of 60% or over and uh, things should be good. 
Uh, one note is, in case you ha are not aware, is that our schools close Wednesday, and we have somebody here that will discuss that um, a little bit later. So if anybody has anything they'd like to add, that's pretty much my update and where we stand right now. Um, can I talk about the food shelf? You can talk about whatever you'd like to. I just want to, to know that the Woodstock Community Food Shelf will be open this week, our regular days and hours. Today, Monday, 4 to 6, Wednesday, 1 to 3, and Saturday, 10 a.m. until noon. We're changing our process for food distribution, but all are welcome to stop by there if you need help. That's it. Thank you. And I want to thank the Woodstock Food Shelf. As we began to understand that this might be happening, Woodstock Food Shelf supplied us with enough food until we um, were released funds so that we can begin to meet the needs of the free and reduced lunch students. And so they amazingly delivered a truckload of food on Saturday. We began organizing it yesterday, and today every single student received a bag from in this district. So that's over um, 200 students received bags with food, and it was all provided by the uh, Woodstock Food Shelf. And that's for the entire community. So not just Woodstock, Killington, Barnard, Pomfret, Reading. It was amazing how they came through for us. Um, just to clarify, the governor gave us until Wednesday that we could remain open. However, we will be closed at the end of the day today. We wanted our students to come on campus, um, collect any assignments, get resources, computers if necessary, meet with their teachers one time before, make sure that um, e-learning platforms. Um, we've been preparing for this for well over a week and we're really in a good position to move to remote learning with our students. We'll have um, also a structure from students from K through 12 in terms of having resources and materials so that learning can continue while we're not in the building. Um, we will begin delivering food um, daily as of Monday. Um, our kitchen staff will be coming together at the middle school and high school and cooking meals and then we'll have teams that will deliver to houses, um, dropping off um, items to each house every day and so we'll have some interaction with students so that will continue. Um, teachers will be either working in the building or remotely. We're going to come in on Wednesday and Thursday to make sure all our platforms are in place. Um, we'll push out for the first time on Friday. Um, so teachers will be in the building just to make sure our technology is working and students have access to technology. Um, and then beginning on Monday, faculty will either work remotely or in the building so that they can support their own families but also continue to interact and engage and collect um, resources from their students. So we feel like we're in really good shape. We've been working for a long time to prepare for this. Um, we have had faculty in all weekend and preparing so um, but if any questions please your local principals or you know through the central office at the supervisory union we can answer those questions. You know, I might mention a, a couple of things about the in, in the village um, most of the businesses remain open. If you're not feeling well, please do not come downtown, though. Um, and if you do come downtown, please uh, make sure that you have sanitized your hands in, in a manner that David has passed on, uh, using appropriate hand sanitizer. Um, but it is important, if you do choose to go out, to shop locally and support these businesses. It's going to be a tough time for the businesses locally um, over the, an unknown period of time. And uh, so, for those that are open, and if you're choosing to be out, be prepared and also support the, the businesses locally. Um, one other thought that is uh, not scientific, but um, observational. The uh, markets, especially our local market, Max Market, has been under a big strain, especially from um, uh, out-of-state folks, actually, who are filling their freezers and uh, perhaps providing a second stash of food from their main home. Uh, hoarding is not uh, a great idea um, and at this point not recommended or necessary. Uh, you should have food to support yourself and your family for uh, two weeks. That's been recommended, but um, beyond that, um, think of your neighbors and the availability of things. Um, and. Uh, uh, I do want to mention that um, as of today, uh, the village uh, vote and the village meeting have been postponed to um, April 21st. And uh, that'll be on the listserv, but uh, it's postponed 
on April 21st, and hopefully uh, at that point things will uh, have improved and we'll be able to carry on with normal business. If not, you will hear uh, uh, from us again about uh, updates. Um, so keep that in mind. Thank you. Frank, anything? I guess I have two things. One, I'm uh, really pleased with the response of our municipal staff. Um, everybody's prepared. We're working hard to uh, provide the services that our folks expect. Um, and our contingency plans uh, hopefully will carry us through. The second piece, um, we're going to do a similar version of this tomorrow. New time. At noon? Uh, at the new time, 5.30. Yeah, 5.30. New time, okay. 5.30. Five, 5 yeah. We went from 2 to... We did, we went from 12 to 5.30. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're going to do a, uh, uh, a similar version of this for the business community. Uh, Representative Kimball and Senator Clarkson um, hopefully will bring big bags of money from the state that we can distribute or at least tell us how we can uh, access some of those monies as time goes on. Uh, the governor seems to be very, uh, very interested in making sure we minimize the challenges that our business community is going to feel, uh, as well as the dislocation that will occur with some employees. That's about it from here. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Anybody on the phone? If you're on the phone, if you have a question, we're, we're, we're listening. Uh, Frank or Jeff, this is John Spector. I just briefly want to mention at the, uh, at the meeting tomorrow at 5.30, the EDC will also be represented. And we're, uh, we're about to send out invitations to local merchants today. Uh, the chamber is helping with that. And we're going to want to solicit from local merchants their thoughts as to what types of support might be needed. The EDC is considering, we, we haven't decided anything yet, but we set aside, we, we, we put a moratorium on several large, on spending for several large projects at our meeting last week so that we might have funds available to provide support to the local business community if that was needed. And so we'll be soliciting from the local merchants their thoughts as to what their needs might be, understanding that we might not have the funds and they might not know what their needs are yet, but we'll be asking that question tomorrow after the briefing with Allison from, uh, from Charlie and Allison. So it'll be one meeting at 530. Thank you, Thank you. John. That's great. Thank you. Uh, this is Jill. So I'm joining you from Britain. I'm not um, in Woodstock. So I'm finding out my news from this uh, and Facebook and our website. And I want your, your organization now seems wonderful and you're all being on top of it. But I'm wondering what the plans are for publicity so that people know what's being done. Uh, <clears throat> Frank and I have uh, discussed that and we think we will be going into something that will cover that uh, a lot better in detail tomorrow. We're not sure what avenue we're going to pursue yet, but we will make a plan and implement it sometime tomorrow, hopefully. Okay, that sounds good. I'd, I'd recommend um, speaking to John Spector. They have a very good person who does um, I'm willing to take any help at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. If I could just offer something there, uh, we will have that meeting tomorrow, but there are a lot of employers with questions about who to contact, a lot of employees uh, with interest in who to contact. So I have a couple of phone numbers if I could share that. Uh, so for employers that are looking for information on unemployment insurance uh, to figure out what, what happens in this type of crisis. Uh, the phone number is 877-214-3331. That's for employers to call. For employees who are wondering about their situation, should they be laid off, uh, the phone number is 1-877-214-3332. And those both go to the Vermont Department of Labor, and uh, they have ramped up their staffing in order to handle what they anticipate to be an increased number of calls. So those are for both employers, that first number, and the second one for employees. Is 
Senator, or anything to? No. Yeah. That's that's great. We'll have hopefully some more. To, we have a. The Senate has been meeting daily on conference calls in the Joint Rules Committee, which is the legislature's committee that has been working through all the emergency measures addressing this car crisis. We, uh, we're working remotely this week, and uh, we've been they've been meeting, and we've been able to call in and listen uh, every day at four o'clock. And today we're meeting with the Commissioner of the Department of Labor and the Secretary of the Agency of Commerce and Community Development, again addressing a lot of the both business and employee concerns that are facing all of us. So more, we'll have probably more, you know, it's, it's so fast, it's evolving so fast that we are, uh, we're all trying to stay abreast and we'll hopefully have most up-to-date information tomorrow at 530. I think it's evolving really fast for all of us. Oh, it's unbelievable. So, Allison, I think, I believe, uh, and Jill again, no current recommendation for um, social distancing. Um, are you aware of any closed restaurants and bars in town? Well, I, I don't know. That may be a question for Frank, but I don't believe we have the authority to do that. Um, I know other states are looking at it, and I'm sure the governor at some point will probably roll out those directives. To close what was it? To close bars restaurants, and restaurants and bars. And bars and so uh, this this is a question that's come up in Hartford, and um, because there's a, a move of a, a number of the businesses in Hartford to just close down, and I'm going to try and get clarity today whether a municipality, an emergency management team like yours, could make that decision or not. So we're going to try and get clarity and get VLCT to weigh in on some of this, um, because I'm. We're, I'm not clear uh, who has the authority to do that. Um, so we'll find out more. But Charlie, you were going to add something. I was just going to say right now there is no um, uh, order uh, on the part of the governor or the health department for businesses to close. Right. Um, so it's really up to individual businesses to decide if they want to stay open or to close, depending on what they feel is in the best interest of their employees and their customers. Uh, and their health, but there's no doubt this is an economic shock as well as a as a health crisis uh, for both employees and employers. So, um, uh, state government is responding as much as as fast as they can to this moving situation. So, um, a lot of businesses have voluntarily closed, and that's going to send some some shock waves throughout our community. We just have to be prepared for it, and that's what we'll try to talk about tomorrow. Right, and and in other uh, in sort of best practices and. Other countries that have dealt with this, we're seeing that uh, ev everything is 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 closing and things are. Uh, and in New York, for example, there's a huge movement to do only takeout and uh, for restaurants. And that in Italy and in China, only the the food stores and pharmacies were open, which is something we may move to, but that has not yet been ordered. So um, we'll, we'll we'll have more for tomorrow. Great. Uh, this is Betty and McGuire. I have just been informed the Woodstock Inn is completely closing all operations until uh, March 31st. Is that something that they were planning on rolling out to their employees um, in an orderly fashion? So it's not, um, I'm not sure that they were prepared to have that made public yet. But now it is. Okay, well, they've, they've sent out an email to everybody. Yeah. Okay, there, there you go. Well, that's all. I care. They sent an email to all the employees. Okay. Great. Yeah. Okay. Well, Charlie, Charlie, they also sent an email to members of the athletic uh, uh, yeah. club. So I think it's public. Yeah. Okay. That's it good. is public. That's how I received it as an Eagle member. Oh, uh, there you go. All right, if there's no more questions, I just want to make sure everybody's well aware that the town and village of Woodstock will continue to monitor this daily and change as necessary. Um, for now, we continue business as usual with some minor modifications, and again, we'll change as necessary. Uh, one thing I did not mention, there is a assistance line in Woodstock if you are quarantined or self-isolated and have no one to care for you, get groceries or anything, you may call 457-7516. And that is all I have for today. Repeat that phone number. Okay. If you are isolated or quarantined and have no one to assist you in any way, 
um, if you would call 457-7516. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.